Hello everyone, we are group 17. Today we are going to talk about our class project on authorship identification in web fictions. Authorship identification is one of the most popular challenges in natural language processing and our goal is to correctly identify the authors of fan fictions online. Why is it useful? Let's first think about some criminal cases involving ransom notes, threatening letters, libelous and personal text messages, and phishing emails. Unlike in the old days, today most of these objects are printed or pastiche, and people can't quantify their identity or mask their addresses. So some traditional forensic techniques such as identifying the handwriting features of these objects might not be useful anymore. Authorship identification based on machine learning algorithms, on the other hand, can help us tell who the author is simply depending on their writing styles, such as how they form their sentences or words they use the most and so forth. Authorship identification can also benefit literary studies. One of the most famous authors in history in the world, Victor Hugo, he once published the first two editions of his novel, Le Dernier Jour d'un Condamné, anonymously, but he didn't mean to stay anonymous forever. Instead, he did that to tantalize his readers so that he could earn some fame and make good sales for his book once he revealed his authorship, which he did. But imagine what if he didn't, what if he failed to? What if nobody else other than him knew that he was the author of the book? Then we just might not be able to know who, uh, who wrote that book forever, right? Another example would be one of the most popular Arthurian tales, Sago I and the Green Knight, whose author remains unknown since it was rediscovered in the 19th century. Although most academic professionals agree that the author came from some northwestern English province, had a, an adequate amount of knowledge about French and French poetry, and was Christian. If we have a small, narrow down poll of candidates, and we can use authorship identification to tell who among them was the actual author of the tales, then we can contribute significantly to the field of literature. Also, speaking about fan fictions, um, most fan writers, they aim to imitate the writing styles of the original authors as much as possible, but do they really succeed in doing so? Even if everyone thinks that they write in exactly the same way as the original author did, can machines still tell who wrote what? That's also going to be an interesting question. In addition, authorship identification might also be able to help us detect plagiarism, which can benefit not only the field of literature, but also the fields of law and journalism. We collected our data from fanfiction.net, which is the most popular and famous uh, web fiction archive. And we focused on the famous movie Inception, which is also one of my favorites. We identified the top three fan writers of Inception. And we randomly selected their fanfiction chapters of Inception. They also produced some uh, fanfictions of other works, such as Harry Potter or Avengers, but most of their work are fanfictions of Inception. We cut chapters into snippets, and each snippet serves as a sample that consists of four to 700 words. We have a total of 154 of them, which is still a relatively small data set size, and we'll see what we can do between now and the end of the semester. So we came up with two possible ways to split our data. The first one is just to mix all the work for each author and use 80% of them as our training data and the, and the remaining 20% as our test data. And the other way is to just use all the Inception fanfictions as our training data and the non-Inception fanfictions as our test data. Because as we mentioned above, most of their work are fanfictions of Inception. So this kind of makes sense because we will have an adequate amount of training data. And also because um, the total amount of our data is still relatively small and uh, doing so, like combining the two possible ways of train test data splitting can help us tell whether um, can help us tell whether uh, the original topics, the, the original themes of the, the original work will have an influence on our final performance. Hi, this is Fang Ying. So next, I'll be talking about our methodology for author identification. This is our framework for our project. So the first step is to do the document pre-processing work. Our raw text data are stored in .txt files. So here are a few techniques that can, we can make use of. First one is to tokenize the words, and then we can lowercase them. We can also tag their part of speech for each word. 
We can also do lemmatization, which means we change the words into its original root forms. We can also do n-grams, which means we tokenize several words at a time. And also there is a popular technique called stop word removal. We will be talking about it later. And the toolkits we originally are making use of is NLTK, and we are recently changing into Spacey library. Our second step is to do feature extraction. There are two popular methods for it. First one is pack of words, and there's also TFIDF. The transformation is supported by scikit-learn. Corresponding vectorizers are count vectorizer and TFIDF vectorizer. The third step is to train our classification model. So the model we choose is multinomial knife based classifier, which is suitable for classification with discrete features, let's say word counts or even word frequencies or TFIDF representations like that. And it actually outperforms KN and decision tree based on our previous trials. So we'll be mainly focusing on that. And our model output is just the prediction of the class label. That is an author ID. Our experimental design is that we want to compare two approaches of preprocessing. So as default setting, we would always make use of the tokenization, the lower casing, and also lemmatization. However, there are few, two approaches that we want to compare. The first one we call it LSM words plus some punctuations as features. So based on a psycholinguistic point of view, um, there are a few word categories that are used for calculating language style matching, which is LSM. So we would like to filter all these words and then make use of them as our features. And the second one is to remove all the stop words, which is quite popular in the industry. And from an engineering point of view, it actually helps with prediction. However, we would like to question about that as for the case of author identification. And the second part of our experimental design is to compare two approaches of feature extraction that we have mentioned before. Um, so they actually differ in how they measure the presence of words. So next, Yuan will give you some preliminary results from our experiments. Hi, everyone. Now we'll talk about our conclusions and future words. This time, we've only used accuracy as our evaluation metric. Later, we will also apply other metrics such as confusion matrix, F1 score. Okay, let's take a look on our result on splitting method one, which is 80% of training data, 20% of test data. Very classic in our course. For the feature extraction, it is clear that bag of words gives better performance than TFIDF. Here I make it more clearly. While for the test preprocessing technique, Stop word removal gives generally better performance on both training and test accuracy. 94% versus 100%, 42% versus 94%. Note that we can see under splitting one, we even got the situation that both training and test accuracy equal to one. But does it mean it is a perfect way of splitting? Now we look at our, our splitting method two, which is inception fan fictions as training data, non-inception fan fictions as test data. This time TFIDF loses again. Here's a more straight comparison. While for the test pre-processing technique, now our LSM technique is a winner. 91% versus 82%, 49% versus 40%. Note that this time under the same condition, stop word removal and back of world, we don't have a perfect accuracy, which means under splitting method one, there is a overfitting situation. As we focus more on identifying the author's writing style and data splitting method two eliminates the impact of topics as well as avoids overfitting, 
we will prefer splitting method two. Further, it will enable our LSM technique to be a better choice. For the feature extraction, backwards clearly gives better performance. So, our LSM technique and backup work are so far our best choice. In the future, we will collect more data to have better generalization performance. We can also use other classifiers like random forests and other techniques like n-grants. Evaluation methods such as cross-validation and point six thirty two plus will also be examined. If possible, we might also try to do more than author identification, trying to measure the similarities between the known text and other unknown text. Okay, that's all for our presentation. Thank you, everyone.